Good evening, everybody, and welcome to uh, the CMTA's uh, January webinar, The Things You Can Control, Six Ways to Take Charge of uh, CMT. Uh, my name is Bob Christensen. Um, I am new to this as a member here uh, of the CMTA, and uh, happy to be on board and, and part of the team here helping out uh, with this. Um, I'd like to just quickly take a moment and uh, um, remember a gentleman named Rick Alber who uh, was handling these webinars before me and did a fantastic job. And if you ever need to see any of the older webinars, want to get a little bit of the history of what uh, has been done with these, I urge you to visit the, the CMTA website and uh, you'll see all the webinars there that have been recorded previously. And uh, Rick was um, the uh, Volunteer of the Year for 2014 last year. Unfortunately, he passed away this past fall. And uh, But uh, I would just like to give my personal thanks uh, because I've seen the work he's done. And it was fantastic as a volunteer. Uh, well, well done service. So thank you very much, Rick. Um, you should see on your screen um, a way to ask questions. There's a little button on the control panel that comes with GoToWebinar. So you can ask questions. And I'll be uh, collecting those questions throughout the uh, presentation. And I can't guarantee we'll get to all of them. But we will get to some of them um, at the end when uh, Bethany has some time to take some questions there. Um, so um, please use that to communicate with me. Understand it won't, it won't interfere with what uh, Bethany is doing. And uh, we'll keep a running list here, and we'll try to get to as many of those as we can at the, the end of this, uh, this webinar. So um, that's the introduction. And having um, said all that, um, I'd like to introduce uh, Bethany Malash. And uh, Bethany is the CMTA's Director of Social Media. And uh, she's also a Berkeley-trained nutritional scientist. So. Um, Bethany lives in California and was diagnosed with CMT1A at the age of 12. And uh, since then, she's uh, set out to be a CMT uh, advocate and learn everything she can about the CMT that she has and that we all share. And, uh, and I would say that Bethany believes that you know, being armed with that knowledge, um, that we all can live a very happy life, even though we have CMT. And I know we're all uh, affected a little differently, but uh, uh, I think you're going to find tonight's talk uh, very uh, enlightening. I had a, had an opportunity to talk to Bethany a little bit over the past week, getting ready for this, and uh, I'm too as a CMT person uh, with CMTX. Um, I'm very excited about hearing what she has to say. So she's a passionate advocate for for us as patients. Um, she created the first youth focus group on Facebook for CMT. And uh, she's got a lot of great ideas and great things to, to say about, the C, about CMT and how to make it a little bit easier and a little bit more manageable for all of us. So having said that, I am going to now um, turn it over to Bethany. And uh, Bethany, take it away. Great. Thank you, Bob, for that great introduction. I am so delighted to be speaking with all of you today. And I'm really excited about what I have to share with you and about this topic. Also joining me today is a special guest, Tom Malosh. Tom is my father, and he also has CMT, which we know to go back at least four generations in our family. Tom's also a published author, a speaker, and he helped to create and write the CMT Survivor's Guide, which many of you have probably read. A lot of what I'm going to be sharing with you today is my perspective on how I've learned to take control with CMT. And Tom will provide an intergenerational perspective on some of these issues as well. Thanks, Bethany. Thanks, Bethany. And Thanks, Bethany. I'm, and uh, hello to everyone. For some reason, my mic was giving me trouble. Uh, that was a picture of me on the, <laughs> on the prior slide and a long time ago. And the little girl on my back was uh, Bethany. And it's great to be here, and uh, I'm looking forward to pitching in on a, a few of the subjects that come up and giving the intergenerational perspective. Great, thank you. So today we're talking about ways to take charge of CMT and to be in control. 
but I can tell you that I have not always felt so control in control of my life. Um, probably like a lot of you, as my CMT got worse, I tended to focus on a lot of the things that I couldn't do, and there were many. Uh, and I felt a loss of control not over my body, but also over my life and where I was headed. And for me, when I say out of control, that meant being unable to walk without pain by age 18 and needing a scooter to get around. But I've realized over that journey that that was the wrong way to think about it and that the right way is to focus on the things that I can control and to find those things. And those are the things that I want to share with you today. These are my six things that we can control to take charge of CMT. We can control the things that we know. And luckily, CMT does not inhibit us from learning. And learning information is going to be a huge part of supporting us on our journey. Now, the fact that you even took the time to join this webinar tells me something really important, which is that you're already taking a really active role in learning about CMT. And I would suggest that you educate yourself in pretty much every area of CMT and CMT care. You probably already realize that you cannot depend on the knowledge of the medical practice. Uh, because more than often than not, your average staff person is not going to know this stuff. Um, the good news is that while most doctors are generalists, you really get to focus on becoming an expert in this one thing. Um, and a few of the resources that are really going to support your learning may include the CMTA's website. They might include your local CMTA branch or a CMT Center of Excellence where the clinicians are definitely not going to be your average doctor in terms of knowing about CMT. Um, and you can find your local branch or center of excellence on the CMTA website. Today I'm going to focus on just a few of the things that I really think you should know in order to help you advocate for yourself. You should know the lingo of an orthotist. If you are like most people with CMT, your orthotist is going to be a very important person in your life, whether you like it or not. Um, and there's several common vocabulary words that come up over and over again with CMT patients. And I really think that it's worth the time to learn them so that you can really have a conversation with your orthotist. Um, for example, the, the picture on the top right illustrates the difference between plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. Plantar flexion is that pointing down of the toes, and dorsiflexion is lifting your toes up. A lot of CMT patients have trouble dorsiflexing their feet. I'm one of them. Um, also illustrated on the left is the difference between eversion and inversion. Eversion is when your foot's pointing outwards. Inversion is pointing inwards. And a third example is the difference between supination and pronation. Supination, you see the foot has ankles that are collapsing out and toes that are turning inwards. And pronation, the ankles are collapsing inwards. Now, the point of all of this is not for you to memorize all of these right now. Um, but to show you a few examples of words that you should know. Um, but really, the best way is when you're with your orthotist at an appointment, ask them, right? Bring a pen and a paper. And if they throw out some weird jargon, Get them to explain it to you, right? And especially how it really relates to the bracing options that they're offering you. Um, the goal of all of this is not to be a really annoying patient, although that can be one result. Um, but it's so that you can really communicate your needs effectively and make sure that you're getting the best quality care that you deserve. You should also probably learn a little bit about pain and pain management in CMT. Now, there's a couple types of pain associated with CMT. Some people experience joint pain or pain from bone deformities in their feet. That's going to be um, addressed more with surgical options or bracing. Um, but more often than not, the pain I hear patients really complaining about is that sharp, shooting, burning type of pain especially in the limbs and the feet. 
Um, and this is our neuropathic pain. And for this, I really want to point you guys to two great articles. And these are also found on the Resource Center um, in the free info kit on the CMTA website. The first article is by Dr. Greg Carter, and it's called Neuropathic Pain and CMT Disease. And Dr. Carter sees a lot of CMT patients, and he decided to do a study to show whether or not patients with CMT tend to experience pain. And he found that a majority do. So if you have a doctor who still insists that CMT cannot cause pain or rarely causes pain, maybe print that article out and bring it to your next appointment. Another great article is by a CMT expert, Dr. Steve Shearer, on managing neuropathic pain. And he really nicely explains how CMT causes pain and the dis different medicinal options that there are to address it. Um, and how to prescribe those medications and use them appropriately. You should also know a little bit about the surgical options for CMT, what they are, when you might have them, and why. Now, for me, because my quality of life had deteriorated so much by uh, age 18, I chose to undergo major corrective surgery on my feet. Um, these are actually my feet in the pictures before you. And I did the feet one at a time, so you can see the left foot has already had surgery. And compared to the right foot, which is pre-surgery, there's just a really striking visual difference. Um, and for me, the difference is between walking and not walking. Um, if you're interested in, in learning more about the surgical options for CMT and really, you know, when you might want to have them and why, there's a really great video on YouTube. Um, it's a presentation by an orthopedic surgeon named Dr. Pfeffer who sees a lot of CMT patients, um, and that's on the CMTA's YouTube account, and it's called Orthopedic Surgery, A Step in the Right Direction. And Bethany, this is really a great example of the, the power of knowing something. Uh, you were the first person in the four generations of our family to ever have surgery. We didn't know about uh, the power of the surgery to sort of change someone's life uh, until you experienced it and went through it. And so it's just really valuable in terms of trying to control CMT to learn as much as you can about all of these options. Uh, don't assume your doctor knows. Don't assume other family members who have CMT know. Uh, you know, dig out and, and learn. And, and frankly, the CMTA is such a great place, and some of the online social media is now such a place to, to go out and get other people's experience uh, to learn more of the options available to you. Absolutely. And for me, you know, I first went to my closest CMT Center of Excellence and asked for a referral for a surgeon who does these surgeries for CMT patients. And I actually went to a couple surgeons, you know, just for second opinions to really make sure that this was the best option for me at the time. And, and Bethany, at the time, I, you know, you really grilled the surgeon. You asked them about specific procedures, and how did they know that they needed to do this tendon transfer, and how did they know that they needed to do this procedure, and what were they using to diagnose you? And because you had already learned uh, the words to describe your feet, uh, you know, they took you really seriously because you were speaking their vocabulary, which is just another example of of the more you know, the more you can you can engage your doctors and your therapists in a conversation that intrigues them. Absolutely. What else can we can control? We can control the things that we eat. Um, nutrition as a field of study has really exploded in the last decade, uh, which is someone who studied nutrition I find personally delightful. Um, but while we're realizing that nutrition is fundamental, uh, we're still trying to understand a lot of the basics. Um, and when it comes to CMT, this can be especially frustrating uh, because we know that 
optimal, optimal nutrition is probably even more important when we have something like CMT going on. Uh, but the details of what that entails aren't quite clear yet, um, and the experts haven't really reached a consensus. I know, Bethany, uh, that, that the, said, the more you studied nutrition, the more you were like, I don't know what to believe anymore about anything that's been popularly published. You know, as, as you were studying nutrition at Berkeley, you're like, yeah, you know, my, my teachers are like, there's still so much we're learning about this field. Absolutely, and unfortunately, a lot of researchers don't like to publish negative results. So while you may see one study that says taking a certain supplement decreases inflammation, there could have been several other studies that showed it didn't do anything, but they weren't published, right? So this is why, as nutrition practitioners, we really want to see a lot of studies showing the same thing. Uh, before we make recommendations to patients. Um, that said, I don't want to be discouraging because a healthy diet is still going to be a really important part of supporting your body and of taking control in CMT. Um, so for now, I'm going to focus on a few of the things that we do know and I think should be paid special attention to for CMT patients. So nutrients of concern for CMT patients are definitely going to include ones related to bone health. And CMT patients tend to be at a greater risk for bone loss due to loss of exercise and muscle loss. Um, and frankly, we also have a greater risk of bone fractures because we're more likely to, to fall. Um, so calcium is one nutrient that we really want to pay attention to. Um, since it's going to be crucial for having strong bones, and we're already at a little bit, bit of a disadvantage in this regard. Um, I always like to try to get nutrients from food when possible. If you're someone who doesn't have an issue with dairy, uh, low-fat dairy products are going to be fortified with calcium, so that's an easy way to meet your needs. Otherwise, calcium can be a little bit tricky to get adequate amounts unless you really focus on getting a lot of dark leafy vegetables um, or if you don't mind eating some tofu every day. Um, I definitely recommend before supplementing that you really uh, try to get an actual diagnosis of a deficiency. Unfortunately, testing calcium levels is a little bit tricky um, because your blood levels may test as fine, but your body could still be pulling calcium from your bones. So if you're concerned about your calcium levels and you think you're at risk, maybe because of your diet, consult your physician or a registered dietitian about starting a supplement. Um, and it usually does not take a lot of calcium to correct a deficiency. Uh, usually no more than about 250 to 500 milligrams a day. So that's a good one to discuss with your physician. Now, there's some good news of calcium, which is that if you're getting enough vitamin D, that's also going to help with the absorption and the utilization of calcium. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people are also deficient in vitamin D because it's very hard to get through food unless you're eating a couple pounds of salmon a week. Um, and even so, some types of salmon don't have a lot of vitamin D. And if we're deficient in vitamin D, you tend to see, again, weak bones, fatigue, depression, a weakened immune system, all things that we really don't need more of when we already have CMT working against us, right? Um, the good thing is the testing for vitamin D is much better. It's super easy to test for, and the test is really accurate. Um, so that's a great one is go out and get tested um, right now <laughs> and then discuss supplementing with your physician. Um, sun is another natural way to get vitamin D, but unfortunately it can still be a little tricky, uh, especially depending on where you live, to get enough during the winter time. Uh, 
Um, so like vitamin D, iron is a fairly common deficiency, especially among vegetarians. Um, but if you're not a vegetarian, it's fairly easy to get in food. Uh, there's a lot of iron in red meat. Um, if you are going to just try to get your iron through your vegetable sources, uh, make sure to have vitamin C sources with them um, because that's going to help you absorb the iron from the vegetables. Um, if you aren't eating a lot of iron-rich foods, and especially if you're unusually tired, don't just blame tea on it. Uh, have your doctor check your iron levels. Um, and especially remind your doctor to check your storage iron, um, which is called ferritin, because you can have symptoms of iron deficiency anemia, even just if your stores are low. So, um, and again, that. you really want to actually diagnose a deficiency before supplement iron. Uh, again, you really want to diagnose a deficiency before supplementing because too much iron is as bad as too little iron. Um, and supplemental iron can also be hard on your stomach, so you only want to take as much as you need to. Not add on to problems caused by CMT, um, but to support our body with everything that it needs, especially, um, especially in terms of bone health things that are going to promote fatigue. And, and Bethany, one of the reasons that you so focus on this is if you have CMT, you're, you're going to, everyone is going to want to blame your symptoms on, on uh, your CMT, and they might miss the fact that you could, you know, get over at least some of your fatigue with, with iron. Uh, and some of your other issues with vitamin D. So we need to be extra vigilant in our community in, in these basic nutritional ideas because we're already symptomatic of these things and everyone will just blame it on CMT and, and maybe we could do something with our eating that would really help us. Um, and I know that I suffered from chronic headaches for a long time. Deep out, right? Um, and it turned out that I am responsible for the headaches. Um, so you know, don't put it off. Investigate these other options because it may be a really simple solution, much simpler than CMT. So the one thing that the CMT experts actually agree on is that it's extra important to have and maintain a healthy body weight if you have CMT. Um, you know, excess weight is going to mean more stress on already compromised joints. It's going to make it harder to get around, um, and it's going to put us at risk for additional health complications. So. Like a lot of people with CMT, I have really struggled with maintaining a healthy weight. And by the age of six or 15 or 16, I was about 60 pounds overweight. And I know how hard it is to lose the weight. I would never tell anyone that it's easy, especially if you have CMT. I couldn't move around a lot. My metabolism had slowed down. And frankly, I was just eating too much. Um, and it took me about five years to get the 60 pounds off, starting with small changes, um, cutting my serving sizes down slowly, replacing the soda pop with water. Um, it was a really long process, but it is probably one of the best things I've done to help me take control of CMT and to help improve my overall health. So with, with Bethany's help, I've recently started counting calories myself, and uh, you just become amazed at how much, uh, how many calories are in the foods that we eat in the sort of standard American diet. Uh, no wonder that uh, obesity is such an epidemic in the country, and we can, we can control what we're putting in our mouths, but first you have to know just 
what you should be putting there and how many calories it is, uh, especially when you're sedentary, it's, it's harder to, to get out and burn those calories off later. Right, I think most of us are familiar with the whole idea of calories in, calories out. And the reality is, is that it is more complicated than that. Not all calories are equal. People have different different metabolic pathways, different, you know, issues going on in their own biochemistry. Uh, but also most of us who are sort of, you know, eating a standard American diet are eating way more calories first trying to start losing weight and to start cutting back is to really start paying attention to the calories because often it's, it's truly shocking what we're putting into our bodies. Hey Bethany, um, this is Bob. I just want to let you know that your, uh, your microphone's cutting out quite a bit here now. Um, so no. The other thing that we can control is the things that we wear. And when I was first diagnosed with CMT at age 12, my neurologist immediately tried to get me into AFOs in the picture. This was not a very successful endeavor. Uh, these braces did not work for me on a lot of levels. But at 13 or 12, no one really listens to you that well. And these braces were the only option presented to me at the time. So I learned in my time with CMT that there's actually many options out there, um, but that there's no perfect option for everyone, and you really need to insist that you keep trying until you find something that works for you. And this might take many, many times and a lot of frustrating appointments with your orthotist, but that's what they're there for, is to find something that's going to support you and your walking as, as well as possible. So I also feel like hands tend to get very little attention in the CMT world, but hand problems can actually end up being more limiting than feet in terms of just getting by with daily activities. Um, and I have pictured here on the left just one type of deformity that you can see in CMT hands. And this is what my fingers tend to want to do. And on the right, uh, there's a splinting option to correct this sort of deformity. And this is just one example of hundreds of types of splints to support your hands, to correct, and to, to prevent deformities. So I highly recommend, if you're already seeing issues with your hands, to go see an occupational therapist or to see a physical therapist who specializes in hands and discuss some of the options that might support them. There are also some really great splinting options for the feet as well. And this is one type, uh, which is called night splints for your feet, and it's used to stretch out your Achilles tendons, which often get terribly tight in CMT patients. Now, for me, I tend to find, you know, putting these big bulky things on at night to be a little bit irritating uh, and bulky. Uh, so I like to think about them as television splints. And just throw these on, you know, while you're watching a show. And even if you're watching, you know, an hour-long episode of Criminal Minds, you can still feel like you're being productive and taking control of your life. Now, in the future, I really expect technology to, to help make me superhuman. Uh, and this design is actually in research and development by NASA, uh, and I would like one. <laughs> and you want a jetpack on yours, right? I do. I, I really think it needs a jetpack, so I will send them that suggestion. 
So the, the one thing I want to reiterate, especially since we lost sound at the beginning, is uh, when, you're, when you're looking for things that you wear, uh, as a CMT patient, you probably should be your, one of your orthotist's most difficult patients because it's really going to be a, a challenge to get this stuff to wear right. And so keep working with them and keep being a pest until, until it wears right. And for you, Bethany, that sometimes took years. In fact, yeah, I think you're still fighting that battle. It's, yeah, it's still ongoing. Um, but, you know, it's worth it to find something that's really going to work for you. I may just be a particularly difficult patient. You never know. So another thing we can control is the things that we buy. Um, now, shortly after I was diagnosed, I went to see an occupational therapist. Um, now, I don't know if you guys have been to occupational therapy, but occupational therapists are really there to show you tools and strategies for doing your daily activities. Um, and there tends to be a big focus on tools that you can use as aids. Um, as opposed to really just the focus of strengthening, which you tend to find in physical therapy. Unfortunately, nobody explained this distinction to me. So when my neurologist told me to see an, an occupational therapist for my hands that were worsening, I was really kind of taken aback when they were pushing tools on me like button hooks. And at the time, as a 13-year-old, to me, this really felt like a Band-Aid approach. Um, it didn't feel like taking control. It didn't feel like fixing anything. And I think I maybe went to two appointments at the most before I gave up on occupational therapy. And to be honest with you, kind of told people that occupational therapy was terrible for the next several years. Um, but meanwhile, while I'm having this huge vendetta against occupational therapy, I'm throwing out all of my shirts with buttons. And I can't tell you how many times I have locked myself out of my apartment because my hands were too weak to open the door that day or to turn the key. Um, and even though I can't hear those of you listening right now, um, I know that many of you are probably nodding your heads. Uh, at, least, at least I hope you are. Um, I think the, the biggest moment of clarity for me was when I was eating a bowl of plain boiled pasta because I couldn't open the, the pasta sauce jar. And it, it really took, it, it took me that long to realize that, you know what, maybe there is a place for these tools and maybe using tools is a, a way to take control, to take back control from CMT. Um, so I apologize to to the physical therapist that I probably, or the occupational therapist that I probably traumatized as a teenager. We can't solve all of the processes going in our bodies yet. This is something that the CMTA is working on and is making incredibly exciting pro progress on. But we can make our lives easier in the meantime um, and that isn't giving up. It's not a band-aid band -aid approach. It's a way to take control. I've spent the last several weeks since I had my epiphany finding thousands of amazing products designed to make life easier when you have weak hands and weak feet. Um, and it's been incredible. I just got my key turner, um, and I haven't been locked out of my apartment since. Um, I'm even considering finally giving the button hook a chance. Uh, the CMTA actually recently made a helpful products board on Pinterest just as a place to store all of these ideas. Um, and if you have any ideas, please let us know because we love to hear what works for other people. So up until this point, I've focused on really practical things, practical things you can do and you can see, things you can learn, things you can buy. Um, but this one's a little more subtle, which is that we can also take control of the things that we fear. 
I have dealt with a lot of fears related to CMT, and one of them is illustrated in this photo. It is not a fear of heights, although I am up a couple hundred feet high on a zip line in the Costa Rica rainforest. Um, instead, I want you to look at this picture and note the long, heavy black pants. Again, I'm in the extreme heat of the rainforest, but despite the heat, I had such a fear of showing my leg braces in public. Um, and clearly, this transcended the fear of falling to my death from the zip line. It took me many years and literally a few interventions for me to finally conquer this fear and go out with my leg braces showing. When I did and I walked down the street in shorts for the first time, I was really shocked at what happened, which was nothing. Uh, the world didn't crumble, no one said anything, and I realized that when you live in hot California, shorts are really awesome. Uh, I was actually so enthused by my, resolution, my revelation that I created a blog called BarrierBrace.com and invited other people with CMT to join me and quote unquote go bear. And that's still up there. People can uh, send you their picture of their braces and you'll put it on the website. It is, and many people uh, have. And whenever I'm, you know, occasionally I have those moments where I feel self-conscious again, and I love going and looking at those photos, especially the kids who are just going out there with their braces and saying, you know what, I have nothing to be ashamed of. I look awesome. Ultimately, CMT does limit me in some really real um, and challenging ways. Um, I don't want to add to that, right? I don't want to add to that because I'm afraid to do things, because I'm afraid of failure, I'm afraid of judgment. Um, and I really don't want to miss out on life experiences uh, because I'm afraid, or die of heat stroke because I'm afraid. Um, but I do believe that there's a place for fear. Um, and instead of fearing failure or getting worse, I try to fear not trying or fighting back. Instead of fearing embarrassment, I try to fear not getting the help I need because I was too afraid to ask. Um, I try to fear not living my life out of fear. I would encourage that wherever you are, you set goals for yourself and get a vision for what you want to accomplish. And those goals might change. Yep, they, they will change sometimes when you have CMT because of the physical limitations. They will but change. Mm -hmm. We set new goals. Exactly, and they don't need to be defined by our fears. Um, <laughs> I mean, if I let my fears... Uh, control my life, I would probably never cross a street because, frankly, it is terrifying to cross a street. <laughs> we can also control the things that we spend time on. Um, a lot of the things I mentioned today take a lot of time and a lot of focus and a lot of attention. And, you know, one of the things we want to focus on spending time on is our body. We want to focus on supporting it with exercise that's appropriate for us. Uh, the picture of me right there is me doing Pilates, which I found to be a really uh, great option for CMT. I know a lot of other people with CMT enjoy swimming because it's also a very low-impact option that's easy on the joints. Um, another great resource is our CMT Athletes group on Facebook, um, and it's for people of all levels of ability, um, and it's a really great community if you're looking just for ideas of how to get more active or find activities that you can enjoy no matter where you're starting from. And um, we also need to spend time 
finding those good medical professionals who are going to support us in our journey and then support us in making ourselves stronger and healthier. Any physical activity is, is such a win when you have CMT. Um, it's even better if you can find something that you enjoy doing, uh, whether that's dancing or wheelchair bowling. Uh, the wheelchair bowler in the right on this picture is Ed Lind. He has CMT and he's a competitive wheelchair bowler. Um, and he's part of our CMT athletes group and community. And his personal mantra is that for him, CMT stands for courage, motivation, and tenacity. And I, I think that's amazing. And who's um, dancing? And on the left, who's dancing on the left? That's me and my fiance dancing at, at a wedding. Um, and we're both probably equally bad dancers, but we're having fun at it anyway. There we go. We can also spend time on each other, and I have especially found that I love spending time on others who have CMT. Um, working with people day to day who have CMT brings me a lot of joy. Um, and spending time giving back to others is probably one of the best things we can do to feel better about ourselves, um, even if those things are really small. Um, and whether that's for you getting involved with the CMTA, or getting involved with a local church or another organization that's important to you, find some way to spend time on others that's meaningful to you. Oh, and this is a story I wanted to tell. Uh, uh, a lot of times with CMT, and I know my mom, especially as she got older, uh, uh, you know, she couldn't get around much. And it's a wonderful story about a woman uh, in British Columbia who would just wave to the kids passing by on their way to school. Uh, she'd wave in the morning, she'd wave at lunch, and she'd wave at, uh, at home. Her name was uh, Tinny Davidson, or is Tinny Davidson. And uh, it, after a while, the kids in the community looked forward to it. And so never, never count yourself out as being able to lift somebody else's spirits, uh, in this case through her smile and through her hand wave. Uh, last year, and it made the news all over the world. The kids invited her in uh, on, on uh, Valentine's Day and all gave her hundreds of Valentines to thank her for, for lifting their day just by being in her window and waving and smiling as the kids walked past. And so uh, it's just encouraging how little gestures that we do maybe can make a big difference in somebody else's life. And probably, too, made such a difference in her life. Indeed, absolutely. Just another example of even when you don't think you're controlling anything, the, the things you can control. So this is where I'm going to end uh, with the sort of presentation part of this. And I really want you to consider this a challenge to look for the things that you can control in your own life. Uh, build your own list, right? This is my list of some of the things I've discovered. You're going to have your own. Uh, send me a note with some, something that you want to work on controlling in your life and, and the things that you've discovered. I would like us to work on controlling our speakers and our sound systems <laughs> when we do I, seminars. <laughs> uh, um, hey, uh, this is Bob. I just want to let you know I just uh, we got a lot of you know, really interesting questions in during the course of the, uh, the webinar tonight. And um, I just sent uh, you a copy of that via email. So maybe you want to take a look at that, and maybe we could answer a few of those here this evening. Wonderful. I will pull those up now. And I also just want to point out that on this slide that I've ended with is my personal email address. And I invite any of you to email me at any time, uh, whether you have questions related to this seminar, uh, or you want to find out how to get more involved with the CMTA. I also have the email address for the CMTA if you have any questions um, as well. We would love to hear from you.
So you're opening up the email? I have one question here, which is a really great one, which is regarding B vitamins, are they good or bad, and are they an issue for CMT? And there's one B vitamin that comes up a lot, and that's vitamin B6 or pyridoxin. And if you look at the toxic medications list on the CMTA website, vitamin B6 is listed. Now, what we want to be concerned about with vitamin B6 is too much or too little. Both of those cause neuropathy, and that's why CMT patients want to be especially concerned about overdosing on vitamin B6. Um, the RDA for vitamin B6 is about 1.5 milligrams, depending on your age and your gender, um, and you can look that up. The CMTA recommends that you don't take over 10 times the RDA. So if you're taking a multivitamin that has vitamin B6 in it, just make sure that it's not more than 10 times uh, the recommended dietary allowance for you. Um, and, and, you know, this is really too for chronic over-supplementation of vitamin B6. If you happen to have an energy drink or a vitamin water once that has a lot of B6 in it, that's not really what we're concerned about. We're concerned about mega doses of vitamin six over, you know, several several months. So someone asked about the splint for your fingers and whether you can bend them to right. Now the splint that I showed in the picture doesn't allow bending of your fingers. So that's again going to be more of a night splint or a TV splint. Uh, but there are other splinting options that will allow you to still write and support a better hand position. Um, and these again are things that an occupational therapist will really be able to go through with you. Uh, I actually had an occupational therapist make me a custom splint for when I'm typing on the computer and they called that a pretzel splint. Um, and it was molded to my hand to fit me really well. Someone also, else also asked about the Facebook youth group and where that is. It's called CMTA Youth Group. And if you search on Facebook for that, you'll find it. Um, and it's a private group just for teens and young adults moderated by staff members of the CMTA. So please, if you know a teen or young adult with CMT, definitely let them know about the group. Um, and if you have any questions about that um, or how to get teens more involved um, and supported, please email me as well. Someone also asked if I could put up the slide for the pain medication articles again, which I will do now. And you can find those articles in the free info kit under the Resource Center on the CMTA website. You do need to be logged into the CMTA website to view the free info kit. So if you're not registered for the CMTA website, super simple, it's free, um, and then you'll have access to some really great articles. And I noticed just this week in the uh, CMT uh, Facebook group, somebody saying their doctor said, uh, oh, no, pain isn't a symptom of CMT. So again, why you, why you want to learn all of this yourself, because it's a rare disease and your doctors might not know that in fact, yes, pain is very much a symptom of CMT. Absolutely. So someone else also said that it would be great to have a blog for people who don't wear braces but don't want to go bare because they're ashamed of their skinny legs that have been atrophied. Um, and for you out there, maybe you're the one who should uh, should be the trendsetter, right, for this one. I think, I think there's absolutely room for another blog, and I'd love to talk to you if you email me about how we can make that happen. Um, we have a really great Facebook group called Shark and Ray Tooth Association, and we often have people posting pictures of themselves, just of their feet, right, and that they've always been ashamed of their feet, and it's so empowering for them to post a picture just sharing that to a group of people who really understand and who have feet that look like them. 
Um, so I encourage you to get out there and post your picture, even if it's just to the CMTA group. And you might really inspire hundreds of other people to get out there and join you. And Bethany, uh, some of the questions that you're probably not answering because they're medical, isn't there a place on the CMTA website where people can ask an expert some of these questions? There is, and if you have any medical questions, you can email the CMTA. I'm going to go back to my last slide at info at cmtausa.org, and we have an extensive advisory board of experts in every area of CMT, from neurologists to occupational therapists to orthotists to genetic counselors. And if you send us a question that one of our staff can't answer, we will send it to one of those experts and get that answer for you. So please take advantage of that resource. And I'm not sure how much more time we have, but I noticed another question or, or statement here. Someone was using MyFitnessPal as an app to count calories. And I know you did a bunch of calorie counting online. Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know if, you're, if you have any recommendations for people counting calories to lose weight. But we know it's a big problem because all of us, for the most part, in the United States already suffer from being overweight. And I can only imagine it's worse as you you get less active. So what, what did you use when you were tracking your calorie counting? Yeah, I didn't use my fitness pal, but I've heard that that's a great option. Um, it has a really large library of foods um, and is actually really accurate and was even recommended by a lot of my professors um, at Berkeley for being a really trusted source. Um, if you're also interested in seeing if you're meeting your micronutrient goals, so those would be your vitamins and your minerals, I would recommend the Super Tracker, uh, which is created by the USDA. And if you, I don't know the URL offhand, but if you Google Super Tracker USDA, um, you can use that, and that'll give you a really nice overview of all of your nutrients. And uh, Bob's saying we're out of time, Bethany. So thanks for having me on today. Even if we were having microphone problems, it was still fun. Yeah, I really appreciate your time, uh, <clears throat> Tom and Bethany both. Um, this webinar will be um, edited. We'll remove the parts you couldn't hear <laughs> and, um, and be put on the, the CMTA website. If you just go to the CMT website and search for webinars, uh, you'll be able to find all the past webinars uh, there also. Um, along with this one. So um, I'd just like to say thank you very much to Bethany and thank you very much to Tom and thank you to all the people who attended. We have well over 100 people, close to 150 people attending today. So that was a really terrific number, obviously uh, just scratching the surface of a subject like this. So hopefully we can get Bethany back soon to, to do more of this. So thank you all very much for your time. Bethany, I'll let you say final goodbyes and call it a night. Great. Thank you, everyone, um, so much. I hope this was of value to you. Please email me if you have any additional questions. Thank you. Goodbye.